Will the Chicago Bulls make the NBA playoffs in the 2019-2020 season? I discuss what is going on, y'all. Five Sports Talk back at it with another video talking. Of course, some NBA here to give you guys my way too early playoff predictions for the Bulls. I do post a lot of Bulls on this channel, so if you are new, welcome. And make sure to go ahead and subscribe by hitting the subscribe button down below and turning on my post notifications because I do post daily videos and you don't want to miss out. Make sure to also uh, follow me on my Twitter and my Instagram social media links down below and on the screen as well. With that being said, I don't want to wait any longer. Let's get started. So again, these are my way too early NBA playoff predictions. And you might be asking, guys, why are you doing them so early? Well, first, because they're the way too early predictions. But secondly, because now we've actually got a full glimpse of what the Bulls roster is going to look like. I tweeted this out the other day, by the way. That's why you guys need to follow me on Twitter, okay? I tweet out gems like that. You guys go need to check it out where I basically tweet out the Bulls roster at 15 players now. We've got 15 players. So unless they cut somebody, this is the roster heading into training camp. And so we've got a pretty good idea with the draft being over, with free agency being over, of what the Bulls roster is going to look like and pretty much every other team and what the roster is going to look like. So let's start right here, okay? And I've got sort of the, um, you know, 15 seeds here in the Eastern Conference. And I'm just going to start listing them out and talk about why I have them there. And then you'll see where I have the Bulls stacked up according to this, okay? So let's start over here at number one. And to me, this is a no-brainer. I've got the Philadelphia 76ers, who to me had one of the best off-seasons. You lose Jimmy Butler, but you able, are able to acquire Josh Richardson, one of the better 3 and D guys in the league. You're able to sign Al Horford, pair him next to Joel Embiid to form a formidable front court. You re-sign Tobias Harris. Now you got a starting five where other teams are going to be afraid to shoot the damn ball because that's how long and tall that starting five for the Sixers is. So to me, they had the best offseason. They re-signed their guys like James Ennis and Mike Scott. So they had a phenomenal offseason to me. They're the favorites in the Eastern Conference by far. Okay, let's move on to number two. I've got the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, they lost Malcolm Brogdon, but you still re-signed Chris Middleton, although it was a very disgusting contract, similar to Tobias Harris. Uh, they re-signed Brooke Lopez, re-signed George Hill. You replace uh, you know, Malcolm Brogdon with Wesley Matthews, so that was a good signing as well. Although Wesley Matthews is not Malcolm Brogdon. But as long as you have Giannis and the role players, you should still be a top two seed in the Eastern Conference, and that's where I have the Bucks at number two. Let's move on to number three, and this might kind of surprise you, but not really. I've got the Boston Celtics here, and the reasoning for the Celtics here is I had the Raptors here, but of course we all know Raptors lost Kawhi Leonard to the Clippers, and so the Raptors obviously going to take a hit. They also lost Danny Green to the Lakers, and so the Boston Celtics lost Kyrie Irving and Al Horford, but they were able to add... Kemba Walker, who to me could be an upgrade over Kyrie, not saying he's necessarily better than Kyrie, but he could be better for the Celtics. So you take that into account, okay? And then you lost Al Horford, but you were able to get some big man depth in Enos Cantor, who I know he's a downgrade, but it's still better than nothing. You got Daniel Tice, you got Jalen Brown, you got um, Jason Tatum, uh, March is smart. So these guys are going to get better this coming season. And you still got a good head coach in Brad Stevens. So I like the Celtics to still remain a top four team in the Eastern Conference. Now here is where it gets a little tricky because to me, obviously with Kawhi Leonard, the Raptors would have been for sure a top four team. And I still feel like they are, but I'm reluctant to put them here. Again, they lost Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green, which are two big losses. Uh, but you still have Marc Gasol, you still have Kyle Lowry, you still have Pascal Siakam, you still have Fred Van Vliet, and they did sign some guys in the offseason, Stanley Johnson, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, you still got good coaching, championship pedigree. I think I have to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them their credit, so I'm going to put the Raptors here at number four, okay? Now, before I move on to five through eight, let's move over here to this side of the board because I feel very comfortable with the bottom of the Eastern Conference, and I'm going to say right here, the Hornets are the last seed in the East. Boy, can you think of a worse roster in the entire NBA than the Charlotte Hornets who lost Kemba Walker for nothing, okay? They could have traded Kemba the last two seasons at the trade deadline, and they didn't, and they lost Kemba for nothing. And I can't even name who their best player is right now, and I'm a basketball nerd. Is it Cody Zeller? Is it Marvin Williams? Uh, Nicholas Batum, who they're paying $150 million to. I mean, it is embarrassing. The Hornets are the worst roster, not just in the East, arguably in the entire NBA, okay? 
Let's move on to 14. And this is another roster I feel like very good about in terms of them being very, very, very bad. And that is the Washington Wizards. John Wall is going to be out pretty much the entire next season with that injury. They might trade Bradley Beal. I mean, this is going to be a full-on rebuild here. Don't expect anything from the Washington Wizards this coming year. The best thing they have going for them is they re-signed or they signed Isaiah Thomas. So that's the only guy I'll be watching on the Wizards. But other than that, they're going to be awful. And then at three, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, really, what do you expect from the Cavs? They they got a couple of rookies. They they saw drafted Darius Garland. Other than that, what the heck are you going to watch the Cavs for? They'll be awful again next year, okay? So I have the Cleveland Cavaliers as one of the worst teams as well. So let's move back over here and talk about another team at number five. And again, I don't feel great about this, but I have to give them their benefit of the doubt. For one reason, Victor Oladipo is coming back. Yes, the Indiana Pacers, okay? And that might be the only reason because to me, they lost Bogdan Bogdanovich, Thaddeus Young, Corey Joseph. So that's two starters and a bench player. So again, they're getting the best player back in Victor Oladipo. That's why I have him here. And they were a fifth seed last year. But to me, you got Malcolm Brockton, who's really more of a two than a one. So is he going to play the one? You got Jeremy Lamb, who's more of a two than a three. Is he going to play the three? So a lot of guys that kind of overlap with what Victor Oladipo plays. So to me, that's what I don't like. But I think they just break even, which means I don't think they got worse, but I don't think they got better. So I'm going to have the Pacers at number five. Let's move on at number six, the Brooklyn Nets, okay? If Kevin Durant was playing, the Nets would be a top four team. Heck, they could be the number one team. But since he's not, let me take that out here. Since he's not, I've got the Nets at number six, which is where they were last year. Again, Kyrie Irving and a bunch of, you know, okay, nothing great guys. Karis LeVert is nice, but Joe Harris really is just a shooter. Uh, you know, they lost Jared Dudley, which shouldn't be a big loss, but they did lose him. Spencer Dinwiddie's nice, you know. Uh, Jared Allen's there. They did lose Ronda House Jefferson. So to me, the Sixers, excuse me, the, the Nets are an okay team, but without Kevin Durant this entire season, I don't think they're anything better than they were last year. So basically, you swap out D'Lo for Kyrie, and Kyrie's better, but how much better um, in terms of the fit on the roster? You, you, we, see what, we saw what happened with Boston. So let's put the Brooklyn Nets there, and let's move on to 7 and 8. But actually, before I move on there, let's go back over here. And I'm going to put the New York Knicks here at number 12. Again, the Knicks added a lot of players, and I did like their offseason. Who did they add? Julius Randle, Bobby Portis, Todd Gibson. So power forward, power forward, power forward. Uh, Wayne Ellington, Reggie Bullock, Alfred Payton. Um, so they do have a bunch of solid players. So I do think they'll improve. Remember last year they were 15th seed. So I do think they'll improve, but not that much where they'll make the playoffs. R.J. Barrett's still a rookie. Let's see what happens. They still have a good nucleus with Barrett, Knox, and Mitchell Robinson, but they missed out on KD and Kyrie. They're not going to make the playoffs, folks. Okay, so let's go back over here. And I've got the Detroit Pistons at number seven. The Pistons were an eight seed last year. Barely making the playoffs. I do see them improving. They signed Markeith Morris. They signed Derrick Rose. Good bench scoring. Um, they could make a trade for us for Westbrook. This is another thing where I'm going to throw in here because if the OKC Thunder decided to trade Russell Westbrook and he's on one of these teams, it could change up a lot of things. So as of the recording of this video, Westbrook news hasn't happened yet. So again, just want to point that out. But I do see the Pistons improving because, again, another year with Blake Griffin, Andre Drummond. Um, and the aforementioned guys that I said, Derek Rose, I think is going to help a lot. And Markeith Morris is going to help a lot. So now we've got one spot left in the East. Will the Bulls make it? And we've got three over here. And let me just say this. I'm going to put the Miami Heat over here. Yep, I'm not big on the Miami Heat. And here's why. Jimmy Butler, yes, they got him. But really, Jimmy Butler, to me, with a bunch of misfit guys, isn't really that great. Now, they get Russell Westbrook, which is another team that's rumored to get Westbrook. Okay, I'll make them a playoff team. But with Jimmy Butler, I, I, alone with guys like Dragic, who could, they could trade, with guys like Justice Winslow, Kelly Olynyk, uh, they got rid of Hassan Whiteside. Again, that might be a, a, an addition, not a subtraction. Uh, Bam Adebayo. I, again, to me, a lot of misfits here. I'm not seeing it. They could struggle. Um, and I'm not that big on the Heat. I really am not. So to me, uh, Jimmy Butler and really nothing else uh, doesn't really make me excited about the Heat. So that's what I have there. And then let's move on to number 10. And I've got the Atlanta Hawks, who, again, to me, they were, I think, somewhere around here last year. 
I think they'll improve. But they're still a very young team, but a lot to look excited for in Atlanta with Trey Young, of course. Uh, they drafted, um, what's his name? I'm forgetting uh, the uh, number fifth overall pick, and I can't even remember right now. This is how bad it is. But they do have a lot of guys, John Collins. Uh, they've got Alex Lynn. Um, so they've, they've got a good nucleus of players in Atlanta. And I do like the Atlanta Hawks, okay? They also, uh, I believe, traded for Alan Crabb. Kevin Herter's there. So I like what they've done so far in Atlanta, okay? But to me, they're still inexperienced. Let's give them a little bit more time. So two spots left, and the two teams left are the Bulls and the Orlando Magic. And here's the thing. Or the Orlando Magic are bringing everybody back. Kevin Fournier, Aaron Gordon, um, Nikola Vucevic, uh, Terrence Ross, DJ Augustine, and they made the playoffs last year. I believe they were a seven seed. And here's the thing. Fine, I can put them here. But am I, am I going to be surprised if they fall out of the playoffs? Absolutely not. I don't, I'm not that crazy about the Orlando Magic, which means I've got the Bulls at number nine here. So to me, this is an example of why, how, how I potentially see, if I could speak, how I potentially see the East shaking out. Um, so to me, I think it's very likely that the Bulls could sneak into this eighth spot. I feel pretty good about them at, at, at number nine here. And again, there, it's not that crazy. A lot of projections um, and numbers have the Bulls as a top eight team. Um, they could very well, you know, obviously take over Orlando. We don't know how far, you know, the Raptors will fall. That's another spot there. But for the most part, you, you feel pretty good about the Sixers, Bucks, Celtics, Pacers, Nets, and even Pistons, I can give you. But Pistons could struggle. But Magic, Raptors... You know, who knows, you know? So the Bulls, certainly, I don't think they're that far apart. They could miss the playoffs, but to me, they've got a chance to go for that eight seed, seven seed, which is what we want here. So again, folks, I hope that helps. I hope that you guys like this video, and I hope this gives you an idea of how I feel about this Bulls roster. I really do think they have a chance to make the playoffs next year, looking at the state of the Eastern Conference right now. So again, if you guys agree, let me know down below. If you disagree, let me also know down below. As always, Make sure if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Please make sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.